Years later, it's a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode is X-Men The First Class. It was released on June 3rd, 2011. And what year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> 12 May, Thursday. What year? No, what year is it? <laughs> Yep, I decided to add that little intro because I'm thinking this is episode 21 and I finally figured out the point of this series. To look back at past pop culture and cinema. Only 20 episodes in, you know, so if that doesn't tell you, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just doing whatever, you know, evidence. But anyways, continuing the whole X-Men Fox series. This originally was supposed to be the movie that's supposed to start it. Talking about it before they show up at the MCU. But because of other movies and scheduling, I just, I couldn't do it. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to do this. So I'm doing it here, June 3rd. Now there is like a mixed perception for this movie? I don't know why. I'll say right, this is like my favorite X-Men film of all time, including the two Deadpool films and then Logan. I don't know why. There seems to be, I don't know, some people think it's okay. Like, I guess okay is fine, but I don't know, man. I feel like out of all the movies, in terms of X-Men, this is the only film that feels like an X-Men movie. It's about the team with a young Magneto and Charles, helping them, aiding them, training them, very humble beginnings, why they start where they are. They introduce a bunch of new mutants, which most of them don't even get mentioned later on. I think only a few of them in Days Future Past, but aside from that, not a lot, you know, just not, not much. I don't remember. You got like flying girl with the wings, moth girl that spits out fireballs. You have fire guy, you have wave scream guy, you have, you got the black guy that dies. You got Hank McCoy, the beast. You have Mystique, who's very young as well. Magneto and Charles. And I think that's it. I mean, I forgot one. want. But, and then Kevin Bacon and his mutant goonie. You have the devil, and that's all I remember. And then Emma Frost. So most of the characters that I just named are going to be irrelevant later on. They don't decide to bring them back because their powers are a bit weak. It won't lie. Like the flying girl, she can fly spit out fire but aside from that it is kind of a lame power like even if they make it cool i don't think it would translate well on screen kind of like what power is that but essentially some of these mutants they join the dark side and some of them are good and there's like cool and funny little like training montage in the middle of a section where magneto and charles be like find every mutant that they can during that time which is, i think 70s i think i think it's 70s maybe 60s who knows they try to fight any mutant that they could recruit they recruit them they train them my favorite is easily hank mccoy seeing this character grow up and eventually become that hank mccoy in the regular trilogy I just really like that trying to hide his look because his physical look he does not like it at all does not look pretty whatsoever and same thing for Mystique her and Hank like the beast's whole arc is changing their physical form and how ugly they look and trying to accept the fact that they will look this way no matter what maybe not no matter what but whenever they use their powers they're gonna have to look this way and accept their physical form and throughout the film you got Magneto and everyone telling them just look the way you are it doesn't matter what you look like just learn to accept the fact that Mystique will be blue and have scales and then Hank McCoy needs to accept the fact that he will have large hairy legs and they they try to accept that throughout the film and i think they kind of resolve it i think i don't think they fully learn to accept the fact that they'll look this way and to them that's ugly but i think mystique uses it by the end of the movie learn to embrace it to join the dark side with magneto and then him mccoy still like 50 50 i think like he doesn't learn to accept that until way later on as we see in the original trilogy injecting himself with these like serum or medicine that prevents them from looking normal and human don't see that they fit in as what they love society doesn't accept the whole x-men thing society not accepting what they don't know that's just as more the whole thing of look for Hank McCoy and Mystique. I've got to mention, there's this one agency or lady, I forgot her name, but she essentially asks Charles for help because she wants to also track down Kevin Bacon's character, this mutant who's gonna destroy the world, you know? And so she's basically have an aid for the mutants, but also working for the CIA because she's not on their side, but she's on the mutant side, but she's working with them from the inside. And she's like the reason why Charles is crippled and handicapped, like shoots a bullet and Magneto just pushes it away. And then Kevin Bacon himself. Now, I really like this villain, despite the very generic motive. It's Kevin Bacon. I just really Really like Kevin Bacon, so you know what? All the criticism I get, right? He does not feel menacing at all. At one point, I don't feel it at all, but it's Kevin Bacon. I love Mr. Kevin Bacon, so I'm willing to let that slide. So he's essentially a Nazi that killed Magneto's brother, which is why he's kind of his maker and creator of Magneto. And then later on, he looks very old in the beginning, and then he looks young. So he's obviously taking a serum or has me in powers now, and he does, and he like melts people or something. I forgot his powers, that's kind of forgettable. His whole arc, his whole coin thing, come back around to Magneto because he killed his mother in front of him. Magneto has a freak out two men two soldiers and has a freak out in the room now why didn't he just kill kevin bacon at that time is kind of baffling he has all this rage and anger and he waited years later till he was older to control his powers to kill his maker i don't i don't know this guy killed your mother magneto i mean killed him right, right then and there but either way he grows up to be michael fast mentor who is great in this role that scene of him in that bar with that knife throwing it getting it back and stabbing her back ah! 
And then that theme that plays on, I think it's like the movie theme or just his theme. Anytime he's on screen, betraying his menace and it's kind of his struggle and his past was really damn good. And then he eventually meets Charles and the team. And he's also within that training montage. Charles is the one that kind of teaches him to go to the next level in terms of his power. Like moving that big satellite. That was a really cool scene. Like this training montage might be my favorite scene. Is it my favorite scene? No, you don't take that back. Kevin Bacon is. Never mind. Anyways, but it's one of like the best scenes of him training him, learning to go to the next level and burst his powers. Cool bond between the two characters. I think Michael Fassbender and what's the actor's name of Charles? James McAvoy. They really carry this film. They're great in the film. Anytime they're on screen, their chemistry, their bond because of Magneto and Charles and it just works and it's great. There is a conflict between the two, kill or not kill. In the end, Kevin Bacon killed his mother. He doesn't stop at that. So he doesn't listen to Charles. He puts on the helmet created by Kevin Bacon, puts it on. A whole coin comes back. He has a coin making it go through his head, mirroring Charles like yelling because he's like, I think in Kevin Bacon's head, he feels that killing Kevin Bacon. It was satisfying to Magneto's arc while also elevating him to be the Magneto that everyone knows, hating all humanity, no saving them whatsoever. He hates them only on me inside. And right after killing Kevin Bacon, he has all the missiles. He holds it up. Another just fantastic scene of betraying his powers and his dominance and his motive that's very clear. He hates humanity. And obviously everyone tries to stop them. One lady shoots or accidentally shoots with the help of Magneto, makes him handicapped. And then the scene where they have a shoe size, Mystique goes to the other side because she feels there's no saving humans as well. They will hate them no matter what. And it adds to the whole physical look of her. There's a thing between Magneto and Mystique which always felt like an old young thing. A fast better felt a bit too old. Time of 2011. I don't know. Kind of weird. They leave. There's like nods to like their names. Like you should be called Magneto and like Charles like, you know like there's little nods like that. CIA yeah, leaders like maybe you should be called the X-Men. It's like okay. You know on the nose yes. We don't really know this but it is what it is. Setting up the mansion. Magneto is gonna free Emma Frost. He has a suit on. He has his own team. And then Charles betrayed by James McAvoy. I think he's just a lot of fun. Especially near the beginning of the movie where he's just a fun character to watch. He's getting drunk and it's not something you put out of Charles. James McAvoy he's having so much fun being Charles. is like you know what? I already like this version better. Him and Magneto are on opposite side. One that wanted to save humanity. One wanted to destroy it. And so that's a conflict. And then yeah I think that's it for x and First Class. I think that's all I have to say about it. Really like this movie. I don't know why. Again like I said earlier at the beginning of the video. I don't know why it's so mixed but it's the only X-Men team as like X-Men movie to me. Like the rest of them have been Logan centric and it's just like they only focus on a few characters whenever it's like a team up team. This one feels like it's focused on everyone and yes Magneto and Charles are in front but they're kind of integral to like the X-Men so I see them as being super important to the X-Men team as well. X-Men the first class still holds up 10 years later and is really damn good. But that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far and thank you for watching. <laughs>